like so the last video tutorial kind of talked about the syntax of um, C sound and the um, what do we look at yeah we looked at things like uh, K rate variables A rate variables and I rate variables um, we also saw opcodes we had a look at opcodes and we saw that opcodes are basically like functions they're going to calculate they're going to do something I should have mentioned that opcodes can be split into what known as unit generators or unit modifiers so unit generators are opcodes that are going to generate audio signals from scratch and unit modifiers are going to be opcodes that merely modify or process existing audio signals so anyhow right I also said that we we're going to look at modeling um, this guy here which is called monotron okay so the Korg monotron it creates a kind of a sort of waveform that's a space um, sound source okay and we kind of already have that implemented here right so what is the does it have it has a dun, 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 dun. it has a voltage control frequency filter yeah VCF filter uh, it's late on a Friday voltage control filter right so we can implement one of those um, so that's the first thing we'll do is we'll add a filter to our instrument now uh, one thing I'm gonna do is at the moment we're outputting we have this kind of simple little ADSR okay the Korg monotron does not have an ADSR on it because it's a it's an analog filter so it kind of the very the filter itself is kind of applying a, an envelope to the sound but because we're doing this um, with digital synthesis, we, we probably want to put in an ADSR or else we're going to get some kind of um, clicks. So we can guess we can just leave it the way it is, set up with those parameters. Uh, when we were outputting our signal, we were multiplying it by KNV. Uh, in this case, I'm going to multiply P5 by KNV and just to clean the outputs up a little bit. So we get the same, if I save it and play it, we get the same, we get the same type of sound. Uh, right, so. I'm going to call this, I'm no longer going to call it, I'm going to call this AVCO2 because, well, it's a VCO. I'm just going to call it AVCO. AVCO? AVCO. AVCO. Sounds Italian. AVCO. Now, I'm going to add a low pass filter. I'm going to call this ALP or ALP for short. <laughs> uh, Moog ladder. Okay, so one thing you'll notice about. Um, cabbage is that this little window down here shows us the um, kind of parameters that can be used for any opcode so in this case we've got Moog ladder so and it tells us Moog ladder it says AN KC, uh, KCF and then K res okay so the AN is an audio signal right so we're going to add an audio signal which in this case is going to be our VCO then we're going to set um, KCF which is our cutoff frequency so we're going to set it to just 1000 for the moment and then we're going to do k res which is going to be the resonance we're just going to set that to zero for the moment okay so and then i'm going to output alp and then i'm going to save this and now we should have a kind of drastically different sound okay so we're getting a much kind of duller tone because we have a low pass filter set to 1000 hertz so this makes it a little bit brighter okay so um right just just to go over this code again a little bit what's going on here so we've got the output from this avco from this vco2 it's called avco so the output is we refer to the output argument as avco then we're plugging that into the first input of our moog ladder so and in this way if you use the you know the kind of well basically if we were to do a flow chart this would be the vco so it's kind of going to create some kind of thing and then it's going into this filter which is the Moog ladder so this would be how you'd represent it in a kind of a block diagram and then you've got your 5000 here and zero and then that's going to the outputs so you've got two outputs here blah 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 okay so that's kind of a very simplified oh yeah we've got a uh, we're multiplying this by kn so we have a kind of a multiplication thing here and then we've got a kn thing here so blah blah blah. well that's kind of what it looks like that's kind of how signals are patched together in c sound we take the output of one opcode and we plug it into the input of another opcode um, and that lets us kind of build up a kind of complex chain of signal modification and generation okay so the next thing you want to do so if we go back to the monotron the next thing is it has a cutoff knob that lets us set the cutoff 
for the particular frequency or for the for the sound so let's just set the cutoff frequency so if i go back to cabbage i'm going to add a cutoff frequency knob right so how do i do this i'm going to go away from that i don't want that yes so and this right so i'm going to first of all i'm going to click this which is edit mode or i can hit command e or control e when i hit edit mode it lets us select the particular widgets right so in this case you can see that when i select the keyboard it highlights the keyboard text and it also drew a little bit of or it didn't draw a little bit it just created this um properties window over here okay so we can edit how this instrument or how this widget looks okay uh, i'm just going to right click and i'm going to insert a slider i'm going to insert a rotary slider it's going to make it a little bit bigger okay and now you can see it's highlighted this text and uh, you can see as i move this widget around it's going to update the text up here okay so just a quick kind of um i suppose a quick overview of the text itself so every time you add a widget in here or to your plugin window you get a new line of text in your cabbage code okay so in this case it's an r slider because we're generating a rotary slider okay the next thing you have here is a bounds identifier. So each of these things are identifiers. Everything that happens after the widget name or widget type is an identifier. So in this case, you've got a bounds identifier and you've got a range identifier. Uh, as you can probably imagine, the bounds identifier relates to the dimensions and position of the widget on in the plugin window. The range is going to be related to the range of the slider. Okay, so we can set the range of the slider over here. We can set minimum, we can set maximum, we can set um, skew value, which is this value here, which determines if the slider is gonna behave in a logarithmic way or in a linear fashion. And then you got the last bit, which is step value, which is the increment. So it's gonna determine what size each step is each time you move the slider, okay? so. As this is going to be used for um, cutoff frequency, I'm going to set the minimum value to 1 hertz and I'm going to set the upper value to 20,000 hertz, which is kind of more or less half the sampling rate. And I'm going to set the initial value to 10,000. This can all be done. This can all be done over here as well in, in, in this section here if you want to do that. Uh, I find it just kind of quicker to just edit it directly in the text. So if I save this, now we've got a slider that we've got has initial value of 10,000 minimum value of one and a maximum value of 20,000. Okay, so we're off to a good start. Now the only thing is that that slider doesn't control anything in our instrument yet, right? So we have to find a way of connecting the slider value to our instrument. So to do this, we use channel identifier and I'm gonna set this to cutoff. So a channel identifier takes a string, which is the name of a software channel. Every time the slider is moved, it's going to send its data to a channel called cutoff, which CSound can then pick up. So if I go down here, yeah, so here's, the, so old school CSound text or CSound code would look like this. So I could do something like this, cutoff, chan get, and then I put in the name of the slider channel, which is cutoff. And then I do something like this and I take the output of cutoff and I swap it in here. Okay, so. So now we've got control of our cutoff frequency. Okay, so I was saying that's kind of old school C sound text, kind of our C sound code might look like that, which is perfectly valid. And, you know, but you might also see, and I might do it from time to time. I might do something like this, chan get colon K and then wait for it what did i call it oh yeah cut off cut off so it's kind of way of calling changet in a kind of functional style okay so both are perfectly valid and both are perfectly useful if if i was using i would say people sometimes students ask when to use one approach over the other i would say that if you're going to be using the value of the cutoff channel in many different places in your code in your instrument code then just declare it up here and just get it once so, but in this case, we're only using it in one place. So I'm just gonna grab it from here. I mean, if you use it once, one or two places, it's okay. But if you were using the value of, if you needed to query the value of the cutoff channel, say a hundred times in your code, then it'd be better to declare it as a variable, which is gonna grab it once at the start of the K cycle. 
uh, and then it's going to use the same value for the rest of the that case cycle rather than continuously querying it. But anyway, for now I'm going to do this. Just make sure this still works. Okay, bingo. Right. So now we have the filter cutoff. Right. So that's kind of where are we now. So we got the filter cutoff. Uh, we don't have a peak thing yet, so we'll do the peak now. And this is a peak resonance. And luckily for us, the Moog ladder opcode has this parameter here, which sets the peak resonance. So again, I'm going to go to edit mode. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy, actually, I'm just going to copy and paste this slider. I'm going to set the value of this. I'm going to change the dimensions of this to be 1990, just going to make it easier for me to. And then I'm going to go 100. I'm just going to set this to 10. I'm going to set this to be peak. And I'm going to put in some text here so we can see what the flip these things do. So cutoff and then text here and text here is going to say peak. Actually, what does it say on the old monotron? It says cutoff and peak. Okay, right. I mean, hopefully Korg don't come after us now for a breach of copyright. <sighs> Gotta watch out. Okay, so and then I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to do chan get okay, and then peak. Now, the default values for the range here don't, won't work, so I'm going to set them to be zero. So the minimum value is zero, the maximum value is one. I'm going to set the initial value to be zero because we don't have any resonance at start. Skew value to be one and step to be this. So now we've got two sliders in there. So, so we can hear how that controls the, the resonance. No resonance or no peak resonance. Now we got some peak resonance. Okay, so thus concludes that particular introductory video. Uh, in the next one, we'll have a look at what these things do when implementing a um, an LFO. Uh, it must be said, uh, well, it probably must not be said, but it can be said that um, the pitch control in this. I mean, what does the pitch control do again? There's like, yeah, so ba basically the um, the keyboard we obviously have from this. I'm trying to remember what the pitch control does in this again. Uh, anyway, yeah, there's loads of people out there screaming at their computers now saying it does this, you bloody idiot. But I just can't remember. So well, I'll, I'll have a quick look at what the pitch thing does. Uh, and then I'll, I'll pretend I knew it all along when we get to the next video. How's about that? Okay, goodbye. Bye bye.